Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I made another video about the medical exam that you need to have before your interview. This video is going to be about part one and part two of the interview process. Um, I don't know how long they've been doing this, but I know when I had my appointment, um, August 2nd, 20, 2021, um, they did split it up into two parts. So the first part of the interview is at the appointment that they sent you in the email. So that first email you guys received that says um, they gave you your appointment date, that's going to be your first part. And in this first part, um, what you're basically going to do is just hand them paperwork that they need. Um, so that's going to include your passport. And depending on your case, every case is different, so they're going to require different paperwork. Um, but you know, they give you a checklist on the USCIS website. Um, just make sure you bring everything, literally bring everything, bring originals of everything, originals and copies. Um, cause you don't know what they're going to ask for. Specifically for me, they did ask for all originals. Um, and they do give it back to you at the end, but yeah just make sure you guys bring it i did hear a couple people next to me who didn't bring originals and they couldn't continue their case they were sent back and they were told they need to come back with the originals of the paperwork if they want to continue the process so in my specific case they asked for my passport my husband's birth certificate our marriage license and our latest um, income tax so those are four things. Um, that's pretty much all he asked for, I'm pretty sure. So when you arrive to the US consulate, um, it is a government building. It's nice and pristine, nice and clean. Um, there is a security guard at the front, so you can't get in until you get past him. Um, he's not really checking for too much. I think he's just checking that you do have an appointment. So have your appointment confirmation ready. And then depending for whatever reason you're there for, he'll send you to a specific line. So since I was just doing the first part of the interview, he just sent me to the very last line. And yeah. Um, once I got to the front of that line, this is all outside by the way, um, this first part. So you're waiting in line outside. When you get to the front of the line, there's a guy who's gonna check for your um, appointment confirmation, your medical paperwork that you should have received from the clinic. And I think that's pretty much it. Oh, and he's gonna check for your biometrics. So make sure you have all three of those items when you get to the front of the line, as well as your passport. So yeah, have all those things ready when you get to the front of the line. Um, at that point, that guy is gonna sign something on your paper. So for example, oh, by the way, this is what I brought. Um, so it's just like a one inch binder. It's an old recycled school binder. And I had all my stuff in these like, um, sheet protectors and I had these dividers in between and So yeah, this is what he did to mine. Um, this is my immigration visa interview appointment. Um, I just printed out the email that I received. And then, oh, I almost forgot. You need to bring your, your DS-260. That's the application you should have filled out online. Um, so at the end of that checklist, you can go, after you fill out that application at the end, it gives you a confirmation and you can print it out. Um, you can print it out at any time. It's just kind of annoying. I couldn't really figure out how to get to the end without clicking on the actual application and just sitting next, 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 next <laughs> until it gets all the way to the end and yeah. Anyway, so it looks like this. It has two barcodes. Um, you just print that out. So this is how you're gonna wanna turn it into the guy at the front of the line. Uh, your passport. Um, your interview appointment, um, your DS-260, your biometrics, which 
honestly now i don't even remember what the biometrics was but that biometrics um page i think Ugh. honestly i'm so sorry i can't remember but i think they hand you a piece of paper at the end of your biometrics and that's what you give to them um and then your medical thing just proving that you already did go get your medical stuff after that you're gonna go inside the building finally and um in there you're gonna get check so make sure you're not bringing any electronics no electronics allowed at all so i left my cell phone with my dad who was waiting outside um on the side of the building um because nobody can enter the building unless you have an appointment so only you can enter the building by yourself um i guess also if you have kids you can enter with them but like i think your spouses or your parents and stuff they can't come in unless they are also doing an application or interview. So yeah, you go in, um, make sure you have no electronics on you, no belts, um, big jewelry, um, anything that's gonna trigger the, the little alarm thing, cause they're gonna make you walk through a metal detector. Um, they do make you take off your belt and that's all i was wearing i was just wearing a belt and my ring um it, so they make you take off your belt and like i said if you have anything else you can bring water you can bring a purse so i brought my backpack and i had my binder in there um i didn't know i could bring water or else i would have but yeah i saw people with like a little water bottle so i would suggest you do that because it's a, it's a really long wait i would also suggest bringing a book um to read because it is a really really long time you don't have a cell phone so you can't like get distracted anyway and when you get to the front when you get to like the waiting area um nobody was talking like literally the whole building was quiet except for the people interviewing and i think that's just because everybody was like super nervous but yeah the longest part about that is just the waiting time um there is people along the way just guiding you to where you need to go where you need to wait so just listen to them um but yeah the the longest part is just the waiting you just i was waiting for like an hour and i have heard people talk about like different colored chairs and what they mean the only thing i really did notice was that um, the single mothers who had their children with them, um, and I'm talking about like babies or toddlers, they all kind of got sat in a certain area. And I think they were more like a, an express lane because I saw them moving a lot faster than everybody else was. But I, it makes sense, you know, because they have children, those children are crying and running around, and I think they just kind of want to get them out of there as quick as possible. And then everybody else, for the most part, on the other side are just um, regular people, men, women of all ages, um, just waiting to turn in their paperwork. And literally, that's it. He just kind of confirms your name, your date, where do you live, gets that paperwork from you, and... I want to say that's it like I I was so stressed out <laughs> during this process I'm sure you guys can relate this is a very stressful process so I can't really remember everything um, but I from what I do remember that's pretty much all it was it was a very very short thing um, he then gave me a blue sheet of paper that gives you what line you're gonna get in the next day so mine said um, Isla Tres. So I don't know if that translates to Island 3 or Isle 3. I think it's Isle 3. And it gives you the time. So mine was at 7 a.m. the next day. So I came back the next morning. There's a security guard at the front who kind of, depending on your situation, will send you to a different line. Um, so since I was Isle 3, he sent me to the Isle 3 line and yeah i just waited there you get to the front they check your paperwork 
and then they send you off to the building where you are gonna go get your interview. Uh, my interview lasted maybe 10 minutes. It was really short, really quick and easy. I, they only really asked me like just a few questions. Like I thought they were gonna ask me so many, but really it was just like maybe, maybe seven questions. They asked me who my husband is, where does he live, where does he work, when did we get married? I really thought they were gonna ask me how we met and I was like so ready to tell them our love story about how he was my first crush in kindergarten and we met up again in high school and got together and all that, but like he never asked. So I was kind of sad about that. Um, but yeah, everybody's different. I did hear some other people asking like, how did you meet him? What are your plans after you get to the United States? But they didn't ask me that at all. I think the reason they didn't ask me a lot of questions was because they got so caught up on this one question, which was, since I'm a DACA uh, recipient, they, the guy asked me if I had my previous um, DACA approval notices, and I didn't. I had no idea they were going to ask me for this. Um, it wasn't on any of the checklists, but I did have my um, work authorization permit on me. So I showed him my current one and I think he was able to look me up in the system from there. Um, but yeah, that took a few minutes while he was searching up something um, on his side of the computer. I got really nervous, but it was it all worked out, I guess. Um, I guess everything checked out. I think he was trying to see if I had been in the United States without legal status. I, Cause I think once you turn 18 and you're in the United States without legal status, um, you start um, incurring illegal presence in the United States, um, you know, something like that. But luckily for me, I had received DACA in 2013, which was right when I turned 18. So I was still in high school and I had, as soon as I heard about it, I applied for it and I got it like, I think right before my 18th birthday. So I've always had DACA since then. I've, I've never left the country. He did ask me that too, if I've ever left the country before. And I told him, no, this was my first time leaving the United States. Um, and it was only for this trip. And I think that's literally all he asked me. I think, like I said, he just got so caught up on the DACA thing and doing research on my presence in the United States that he just forgot to ask me anything else. Cause then after all that, um, he just like grabbed my paperwork, gave it back to me. And he's like, You've, your case has been approved. And yeah, it was like really shocking. It happened so quick. I didn't even have time to react. I was just like, that's it. Well, I, I was like thinking it in my head, but I was like, that's it. <laughs> um, but yeah, he just gave me, he told me I was approved, gave me back my paperwork. Um, he told me that I need to go pick up my visa. That I will be getting an email and when I get that email, it'll let me know when my uh, visa is ready to be picked up. I, at the end of the interview, I asked him how long was it going to take to receive my uh, visa and he said it could take anywhere between 3 to 14 days. So that was a Wednesday when I had my second part of the interview appointment. And um, so three days from then would have been Saturday morning and the courier uh, building or the CAS. Um, it is open on Saturdays. I don't know how late they are, but I know they are open on Saturdays. So you can pick up your passport then. Um, so just so you know, because I thought they were closed Saturdays and Sundays. Just Sundays. Uh, but yeah, he said it's going to take 3 or 14 days to so just keep checking my email in case I got the notification of when it was ready. And this is the screen. So you're going to go to the um, US visa website where you confirm your appointment. And here is where you'll, where you'll check the status of your 
passport that'll very visibly say your passport is ready for pickup um and then once it's picked up it'll say it'll update to picked up so if you don't see any of those two wordings then that means it's still processing so yeah when you get your visa back the only difference now is that you're gonna have a thing inside of it that says visa but yeah it's gonna be a um an official it's kind of like almost like a sticker that they put in there and then once you cross the border they'll give you like a stamp up here um once you go through the homeland security at the border through the customs um and they'll stamp it and that's basically them saying that they've reviewed you and you are able to get into the united states so yeah that it's super easy um i totally understand if you guys are nervous because i was completely nervous i was having anxiety attacks about all this but i promise i promise i promise it was so easy they're all nice they will ask you if you want your interview in spanish or english um all of them i think speak english um they were all really nice really friendly just have a lot of patience because there's, there's a lot of waiting um there's a lot of people getting interviewed and every like i said every case is different they might ask you more questions depending on your situation um maybe if you've only been married for a few years um if you've only been married for a couple months i've been married for almost four years so I don't think they really check too much about that but yeah i wish you guys all the best if you have any questions please leave them down below and i will try to respond and help you guys out good luck on your green card journey and i'll talk to you guys soon bye